So today, Quartz fans, or this evening, we are looking at some AUPB wire in the dark, more or less in the dark. And it's resting against my pants. Uh, and they have basically the same stuff, you know, dirt on them. I didn't, like, uh, separate them or anything. Uh, and so they, 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 the red components here are beta emissions from radioactive platinum or palladium. And, and it's radioactive, not like radioactive uh, uranium, but because it's a very dense metal and it was exposed to, or, or it's just plain old palladium with, that's been in the ground, and so it's slightly radioactive because... It came out of a volcano and semi-molten rock, which is where this came from. Semi-molten rock is radioactive because that's why it's semi-molten. That's why it's melted, because it's radioactive and hot. It's not hot because somebody's like, turning the fire up down there. There's no fires. It's radioactivity that makes the Earth's lava stuff molten. And <clears throat> if we were looking at the... Let's see if I can get something... Spherical here. We'll back out. Turn the line on. If we were looking at the Earth, <clears throat> it's from from the center of the Earth to the to the surface is about um, twelve thousand kilometers. About that, a little more than that, because there's a there's a core, the center. So it, it's about ten thousand from the very edge of the core to the very edge of the planet. And if the planet were this big, we would need a microscope to see the surface layer. That's how thin it is. Uh, <laughs> 55 kilometers of that <laughs> 12,000 kilometers is surface rock. The rest of it is semi-molten. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's not like unusual at all, right? Semi-molten Stuff is the most common stuff on the entire planet. <laughs> and so so uh, there's, like, mostly semi-molten stuff. And most of it, and not most of it, all of it, 100% of it, is radioactive, which is why it's molten. Okay, I didn't make that up. I read it in a book, and you know, the, you, because you didn't think about it before, it doesn't mean it's not true. It's just how things work. Okay, so if the semi molten mantle is what is keeping us alive, right? Because, because as the earth turns, the outside turns at a slightly different rate than the inside. Hmm? And there's like a liquid connection between them, so that the, 
they're, they're actually turning at different speeds. And that creates an electromagnetic field in the Earth. And we have a north and south pole. And that creates a, an electromagnetic field that gives us north and south. But it also, as the sun shines on us, like this light is shining, it's got charged particles. Particles that, uh, that if uh, they hit us, will kill us. And alpha particles are two protons traveling at light speed like little bullets. Boom. And when they hit the, a cell, they're so small. The cell is like this, and it's got lots and lots of, of um, atoms of carbon, primarily, and oxygen. Okay. So we've got carbon and oxygen. Hydrogen holds them together. Hydrogen bonds um, are, are, are what to create those, those links between these things. Um, and nitrogen. And nitrogen. Carbon. Hydrogen. Oxygen. And nitrogen. Those four things are all living things on Earth. Everything that's alive on planet Earth is made out of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. It's called chon, C-H-O-N, chon. And carbon's a, a real interesting element because it, it, it has uh, six protons and electrons, two of which are on the inside and, and four of which are on the outside in the outer valence orbits. And they share, they share with, with, with the oxygens and the nitrogens. And what that does is creates a, um, <laughs> like a, um, like solid state electronics, like a, a um, transistor. <laughs> and, and, and the, 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 Hydrogen acts as a switch, and that's how our um, how our DNA and RNA work. That's why they do what they do. They're like like connections. The RNA has got little connections like this, and then the the latter thing for for uh, um, DNA goes bum 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 bum, and and the the switching goes like this, and it's like on a on a spring, and the charge of one atom or the other bends those things. And, and so, as the processes of life happen, this one's attracted over here, and all of a sudden, it's making that connection work, or it's not attracted there, and that connection doesn't work. And that's how our bodies work. Yeah, with, this, with these magnetic, electromagnetic connections inside our body. Okay? If there's charged particles from the sun coming through, it interrupts that system. And it breaks them. And then you get things like um, birth defects. And then... Um, or no life at all. No life at all. 
And so what the, what that semi-molten mantle does is allows the electromagnetic field to create a safety zone on the surface of the planet. Uh, the charged particles are sent around the planet and, and head off out into space and we get the uh, the radiation from visible light and and infrared and, and ultraviolet um, without the the higher energy stuff like um, X rays and and gamma gamma is the highest radiation highest energy radiation. And that's one of the things. It's not even a particle, right? It's too small to be a particle, but it's got such so much energy it can break carbon atoms apart. And that's what um, the semi molten metal does, is by allowing that electromagnetic field to happen. It allows life on Earth. It's one of about 10 or 12 different uh, factors that allow life on Earth. Can't have life without them. Things like, like the ice floating in water. Every other element like carbon or oxygen or it, when you cool them down and they condense into a solid they be and they condense and, and they get more dense which means that they would um, sink right now if ice sank if it didn't float, there wouldn't be life on Earth. Okay? Because once it got down to the bottom, it would stay there and, and stay in even temperature. And it just built up and, and we'd have ice instead of water underneath and ice on top. When ice floats, it provides, there's a, a, a boundary layer that is three degrees Celsius. It's where water is the most dense, and it's more dense than ice. Which means the ice floats. So, so the, because the water's more dense, it's holding that water, the, the ice, up. Like this. Bum, bum. Okay, so so the 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 what we're dealing with with global warming is not hot weather. It's this boundary layer between ice and water, okay, and and it maintains that boundary layer at three degrees Celsius, or it did for all of our scientific history until about 50 years ago. And we started telling people, hey, we've got some global warming going on, and it's because we're using unburned hydrocarbons. <clears throat> we're, we're burning petroleum oil and coal. You know, when you burn wood, it doesn't do that. When you burn hemp seed oil, it doesn't do that because it's from a living plant. Unburned hydrocarbons come from, only from, fossilized fuels. Fossilized petroleum means petrified. It means it turned oil into a rock. It's not easy to break them apart, right? That's, and the oil refineries are uh, just 
filthy and that we have to heat the oil up to uh, like 2,000 degrees Celsius to break those bonds apart. And then when we burn it in our car, a lot of those bonds don't break. They stay. And, and they stay in our environment and they absorb sunlight and heat. And the water heats up. My father drilled it into me that the the equilibrium was at three degrees Celsius. If you look it up in Wikipedia, you're going to find it says four degrees Celsius because that's what they're measuring these days. It went up one degree in the last 50 years already. And in another, um, oh, few weeks, actually, I think, because we waited too long, um, a couple of months, July, the water's going to go up one more degree, five degrees, and then the ice sinks. The ice no longer floats. It, it's already sinking. And, and if you look at uh, things about the Titanic, for instance, you will see that the, the ice of icebergs was actually floating much higher, like all, almost half again higher than they are currently floating. And they can't help it. It's not like magic. <laughs> it's not magic. There is no magic, no Guy in the sky is going to save us. When we screw ourselves out of our home. And that's what's going to go. What's going to happen, you guys? I, I'm sorry that we didn't listen, but we didn't listen. And global warming is catching up to us. And that ice is going to sink this summer, I think. And so I am building um, personal-sized dirigibles with spherical chambers on the bottom for people to live in. <clears throat> like Noah, except you got to build your own. See this stuff? Doesn't make you hallucinate. There's no reefer madness. None of that stuff helps you think. Helps your body work the way it should. And my mind works really, really well. I can do the math. The ice is going to sink. If it's not this year, It'll be next year or the year after, but it ain't going to go any further than that. Three years at the outside. At the very outside. But I don't think it's even going to go that far. We are in the final stages. You know how a top spins? And right at the very end, there's like some wobbles. That's what we're in now. We're having... As the sun goes back and forth, um, actually, you know, the planets like um, tip slightly, right? And as it goes around the, the sun, it stays in the same orientation. And so, so sometimes it's uh, warm in the north, and sometimes it's warm in the south depending on which way the sun is. Uh, the earth is facing towards the sun. And, and, and you know, if this is the pole and that's the pole down there, then, then um, it, it's going to be closer to the northern hemisphere this way and the southern hemisphere this way. Well, the southern hemisphere actually gets more solar radiation because of this axial tilt 
Um, and if you look at planet Earth on Google Earth, you will find that the continents are all on one side. And the Pacific Ocean is all on the other side. And the Pacific Ocean is heating up so much that there's a current that develops in the southern Pacific that we call El Nino, the child. And it's the child of this excessive solar radiation from global warming. And it is so warm that it jumps the equator. Mostly it doesn't. Most currents, this is going round and round like this, this is going round and round like this. Um, yeah, because the planet's turning like this, right? So, so everything up here is going counterclockwise. The, the northern continents and oceans, the plates for the oceans, all turn counterclockwise in the north and clockwise in the south because of the, the rolling of the planet around the sun. These things are all tied together if they don't all work together. There's no life. It's not magic. It's a chemical reaction. Life is a chemical reaction having to do with carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. The balance is absolutely precarious. We have a planet that is... about 150 million kilometers from the sun. I'm rounding it off. I, I, I know all the scientists are going, well, it's a... And I don't... I look it up. <laughs> and you can look it up, too. It's 93 or 96 million miles and a um, hundred million miles is a hundred and sixty million kilometers. So I rounded it off, a hundred and fifty. It's in the Goldilocks zone. The Goldilocks zone means that water can exist in all three states, that it can be a solid and float on the water and reflect solar energy. That's what ice does. It reflects solar energy, particularly at the pole. And the poles are special because all that solar radiation that's going by, you know, the, the aurora borealis, that's what that is. Those are charged particles from the sun being attracted to the polar magnetic field, fields on either side. I mean, there's one field, but the north and south, and, and uh, of the earth, and the, the, that's why they, you know, happen around in a circle around the, the pole. And it's because of those charged particles traveling from the sun. Now, you know what? I learned that when I was seven from my father. This is not new information, man. This is like old science that people figured out a long time ago, but while everybody's watching TV, they, they kind of forget that the science is actually written in books and not found on television. Television is propaganda, y'all. 
keep burning hydrocarbons and buying things at the store when we should be trying to take care of ourselves. And we're not. And we're about to lose the one and only planet we have to live on to global warming.